Hi, I'm Jenna. And I'm Erin. And welcome to Between Two Filing Cabinets, where we bring you tips, trends, troubles, and stories from HR. And in this episode, we're going to revisit an issue that we touched on a little bit earlier in the year, but we're hearing a little bit more about it again. Yeah, that's right. So uh, some of you might remember the emotional support peacock uh, that we talked about in the winter um, and how kind of the brouhaha that that started over on, um, I forget which airline it was that somebody tried to bring their emotional support peacock. Right. And it's up in the news again. By the way, I found out that peacock's name is Dexter. Oh, Dexter. Dexter, okay. which I thought was, was fun. Anyway, um, new regulations. Some, some airlines are coming out with new regulations um, prohibiting certain types of emotional support and companion animals. And so um, certain animals like snakes, no snakes on a plane. Snakes on a plane. Snakes on a plane. Um, <laughs> Other rodents, I believe, um, I think insects have also been barred. So anyway, it, it seemed like a right time to revisit it because it's a, it's a lighthearted topic. And there's a little bit, I think, of a concern that um, emotional support animals and companion animals might end up being the butt of some jokes um, right. and wanting to kind of also have some sensitivity around that for some people who um, are very legitimately using um, emotional support animals, companion animals, and service animals. Right. This might be a really good, though, time. Jenna, can you break down for us the difference between um, service animals, companion animals, emotional support animals, and how they're, they're treated? Sure. Yeah, I mean, they are treated legally differently because a service animal has protections under the ADA specifically. Mm. Uh, they, if it's a service animal, they've been specifically um, trained and certified to provide um, and perform work for their owner or whoever they're supporting. Um, so provide tasks like opening doors, um, bringing them different things. It could be alerting them, like maybe if they have seizures, that they're, just, they're trained to recognize uh, that and alert their owner. And so they have to go through, you know, some sort of training in order to actually qualify as a service animal, which means legally, if it is a, a legitimate service animal, they have to be required public access and those types of um, things legally under the law. Versus an emotional support animal doesn't require any specific training or certification. Um, it's really a doctor that says this person could benefit therapeutically uh, from the emotional support or companionship of this animal. And it's not limited into what type of animal um, that might be. But it doesn't have the same legal protections under the law as a service animal. So for example, if it was an emotional support animal, it wouldn't necessarily be required to have access into certain public areas like a service animal uh, would. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, when we look at it from the employment perspective and the difference between an emotional support animal and a service animal, um, either way, if someone has a disability, we have to look at a reasonable accommodation for that person. Now, it certainly is easier if it's a service animal. Mm -hmm. That was pretty easy to, to figure out versus an emotional support animal, someone like Dexter. That might present more of a challenge in the workplace. And, you know, and I think, you know, when we, and I think both of you and I, when we kind of heard about Dexter, we were like, gosh, really? You know, and to the average person, you're like, gosh, do they really need that insect or that snake or, which is very judgmental uh, yeah. of us. Um, Cause we don't know whether that person has a legitimate need. And if, you know, a doctor says that, yeah, they would benefit from that companionship and it might be hard for us to discern. And probably we shouldn't be being like, does that person really need that? Or they just like that snake and want to be around it all the time. And that's where you can probably get into problems. I think in the workplace uh, as well. So what tips do you have? I mean, how do you see this kind of coming up and what kind of takeaways um, would you give to anybody watching? Yeah, sure. So, you know, you know, we have had a situation with um, companies before where um, employees have requested an emotional support animal, like a dog, you know, and a dog is one of the most common service animals as well. But when you get into that area where it's an emotional support, you might have those reactions of those coworkers. And this is, you know, a situation that a member had um, a while ago where they're you know, they bring in this dog, it's been verified that they medically can benefit from it and it provides that companionship and therapeutic support. 
And their coworkers kind of just don't believe them. And they're like, I think they just like having the dog around. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe they start to make complaints about the dog. Like, does it really have to be around here? It smells. Um, or making fun of the person and being like, I don't think they really need it. Um, it's all in their head, right? Yeah. Exactly. And that can lead to a discrimination issue because our obligation as an employer is to say, all right, they have a disability and our obligation is to look at, can we provide a reasonable accommodation? And so again, if a service animal, a lot easier to make that analysis versus an emotional support animal, you know, something simple like a dog, you kind of apply the same ADA analysis. Is it reasonable? The dog isn't disruptive. It doesn't bite. It's not stinky and smelly. There aren't significant allergies. Um, You know, it's contained in an area. So you'd want to take all of those things into consideration. And assuming the answer to that is, yep, all of that, then it becomes a really a, a issue of respect and sensitivity for coworkers who might be questioning it, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and addressing it specifically with them um, to make sure that they're held accountable for their behavior because that employee is going to have that protection under uh, the ADA. Mm. So kind of the bottom line is, is if you ever had that employee who brought in Peacock, you know, fight that probably initial reaction to go like, yeah, right. That's never going to work. Even though that's what you might be thinking. The reaction should be, all right, let's engage in a conversation, that interactive process. We probably are going to get medical verification that they need the emotional support animal. And then look at, is it going to be a disruption in the workplace? A peacock probably is going to be a lot more disruptive than a dog. Probably. I'm probably not going to stay contained. Um, I don't know about sort of the hygiene issues of a peacock, but I would assume that maybe a little harder to train than a dog. Um, But you still want to show that you're making a good faith effort. And if it's not reasonable because it's going to create such a disruption or, you know, um, you know, distraction to others in a significant way, then it's not going to be a reasonable accommodation, but you can't miss that step. You still right. have to do uh, that analysis. So being respectful, even if, I don't know, we are hearing some stories to just kind of um, not express that and really treat each request with respect. Yep. And, and do the exact same analysis that you would for any other um, accommodation request that an employee um, might provide. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, people get creative with, with things sometimes. And, and, you know, we don't know all of the different needs that people have and what actually is legitimate, you know, support and, and comfort uh, to them. So if we can engage in that conversation, like we would any other quest, like an employee who says, I need a different chair, I need a different computer, um, I need to take an extra break. If we approach it with the same, in the same ways that we with those, then you're going to be fine. Um, but yeah, the big one, I think also is to watch out for those coworkers who are going to maybe question and make sure you hold them accountable for their, for their behavior. Absolutely. Great tips. Thanks, Jenna. All right. Well, let's file this one under the ADA and service animals and emotional support animals. Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks. Bye.